Hey, it's Tad Truscott in the BYU Splash Lab, and today we're going to pop some bubbles and break some balloons to show how everyday life can be beautiful in super slow motion. These simple three-dimensional objects can teach us a lot about fluid dynamics. When you blow a bubble, it forms a sphere. This is because you blow pressure onto the inside and then the molecules on the surface group together as tightly as possible and that grouping causes it to be equally distributed, which forms a sphere. When the soap film is punctured, notice how surface tension ruptures it symmetrically and you get this beautiful spray of water droplets. When we fill the bubble with CO2, it can help us visualize the air movement. The soap film moves away very rapidly and the CO2 cloud remains. You can see the surface of the CO2 has these little waves where oh, the silt film retracted. Wait, okay, go back. I want to see that slow mo. We've also been using light to measure the thickness of silt film. Bubbles have reflective surfaces, and the surface colors actually correlate to the thickness of the silt film. Here, as the metal marble breaks the silt film, the fluid bunches up, and you can see the color changes as the fluid is thicker in one spot and thinner in another. The refracted light changes with thickness and alters its perceived color. <laughs> That's awesome. When we fill the bubble with gas, there isn't much air inside, so it only ignites when it's exposed to oxygen. Here you can see the bubble what? rupturing and then the gas igniting. It's like there's droplets of flame. Look at that. That is incredible. We wanted to see how an electrical charge or static electricity would fit into the equation. So watch how this soap bubble is attracted to the electrical charge. That's what I want to know. When the surface tension is small compared to the charge, the top of the bubble is pulled away from the surface, causing it to rupture. The bubble bursts without making any contact with the object at all. Unlike bubbles, balloons aren't typically spherical. They have different shapes and varying thicknesses and elasticity. Oh my gosh, I'm going to pass out. Seriously, how do you do that? I don't know. Come on, Chad, that's how you do it. Whereas a soap film ruptures evenly, a balloon will tear into oblong or crescent shapes. This balloon is tested beyond its limit, forcing it to tear at multiple stress points. Here's a common experiment in every chemistry class, igniting a gas-filled balloon. Of course, never ever try anything like this at home. This balloon actually has some tiny water droplets on the surface, so you can see when it ignites, the droplets initially maintain their shape and then fall downward by the force of gravity. You can see the heat waves at the top of the explosion, which changes the index of refraction of the air and causes the background to become distorted. When punctured, this balloon rips all the way up and then retracts towards her hands, leaving this beautiful globe of water which holds its shape momentarily until gravity causes it to fall. The wavelengths here are very small and cause ripples on the water and spraylets as the elastic surface peels away. <laughs> that work? Bubbles and balloons can be a part of your own mini laboratory where you explore fluid dynamics through experimentation. I'm Tad Truscott from the BYU Splash Lab, reminding you that science can be exciting, useful, and fun all at the same time. Bring the camera straight! Bring, bring, bring. Okay, you, you control it from here. Somebody uh, help me out here. Yes! Okay, wait, go back, go back. That looks so cool! Get pause.